<clears throat> from their limits, and the latter answers, that is a question for the Supreme Court. The election came. Mr. Buchanan was elected, and the endorsement, such as it was, secured. That was the second point gained. The endorsement, however, fell short of a clear popular majority by nearly 400,000 votes, and so perhaps was not overwhelmingly reliable and satisfactory. The outgoing president, in his last annual message, as impressively as possible, <coughs> echoed back upon the people the weight and authority of the endorsement. The Supreme Court met again, did not announce their decision, but ordered a re-argument. The presidential inauguration came, <coughs> and still no decision of the court. But the incoming president, in his inaugural address, fervently exhorted the people to abide by the forthcoming decision, whatever it might be. <coughs> then, in a few days, came the decision. The reputed author of the Nebraska bill finds an early occasion to make a speech at this capital endorsing the Dred Scott decision and vehemently denouncing all opposition to it. The new president, too, seizes the occasion of the Silliman letter to endorse and strongly construe that decision and to express his astonishment that any different view had ever been entertained. <coughs> At length, a squabble springs up between the president and the author of the Nebraska bill on the mere question of fact whether the Lecompton Constitution was or was not in any just sense made by the people of Kansas, and in that squabble the latter declares that all he wants is a fair vote for the people, and that he cares not whether slavery be voted down or voted up. I do not understand his declaration that he cares not whether slavery be voted down or voted up to be attended by him other than as an apt definition of the policy he would impress upon the public mind, the principle for which he declares he has suffered much and is ready to suffer to the end. And while he may cling to that principle, if he has any parental feeling, well may he cling to it. <coughs> that principle is the only shred left of his original Nebraska doctrine. Under the Dred Scott decision, squatter sovereignty squatted out of existence, tumbled down like temporary scaffolding, like the mold that the foundry served, threw one blast and fell back into loose sand, helped to carry an election, and then was kicked to the winds. His late joint struggle with the Republicans against the Lecompton Constitution involves nothing of the original Nebraska doctrine. <coughs>